The parish of Kalahi, nestled in the foothills of the Schlieve Bloom Mountains in County Offaly, is home to a warm, vibrant community. Its people come together to work, to play, to celebrate the past and to plan for the future. The villages of Mount Bolas and Ballyboy are blessed with a strong community spirit and their many sports and social clubs are thriving. Each and every generation is cherished here in this tight-knit community. At first glance, Kalahi seems like so many other rural Irish parishes, but something very special sets Kalahi apart. The local people have at their fingertips a unique treasure trove, a glimpse into the lives of their ancestors, a stunning collection of more than 1,500 photographs spanning the first quarter of the 20th century. And it's all thanks to one man, Lieutenant Colonel Middleton Westenra Bedelf of Rathrobin House. Rathrobin House was built on the site of an ancient castle of the Malloys, which had been laid to ruin by Cromwell. In 1694, Nicholas Bedelf of Wexford obtained a lease on Rathrobin, renewable forever, and built a mansion house on the site of the ancient castle. Middleton Bedelf was born on the 17th of August, 1849. He was 19 when his father died, and rather than settling down to the easy life of a country gentleman, he took a commission with the Northumberland Fusiliers, travelled the world, and worked his way up through the ranks to Lieutenant Colonel. In 1891, at the age of 42, Middleton Bedelf married Miss Vera Flower, 14 years his junior and the sister of a fellow officer. Vera was the daughter of Sir William Henry Flower, director of the Natural History Museum in London and president of the Royal Zoological Society. Her mother was Rosetta Smythe, an admiral's daughter, whose social circle included Queen Victoria. Vera's family moved within the highest circles of Victorian society. Her childhood home was filled with a constant stream of intellectuals, including Charles Darwin, Alfred Lord Tennyson and Robert Browning. Vera was well versed in the rigidly reserved demeanour and sense of refinement of the time. Her marriage to Colonel Bedelf and subsequent move to the very heart of rural Ireland must have been an enormous challenge for her. Vera's arrival brought a new lease of life to Rathrobin House and a major extension and refurbishment was undertaken. The Colonel and his bride rented the nearby Annamore House while the rebuilding took place. Colonel Bedelf engaged the services of one of Ireland's most renowned architects, Sir Thomas Drew, who was the consulting architect of Christ Church Cathedral and St Patrick's Cathedral in Dublin. The three-storey house was constructed in massed concrete, an experimental material at that time. It was designed in a Tudor revival style, with many unusual architectural touches, including windows with cut limestone surrounds. Although he came from a very traditional background, Colonel Bedelf was fascinated with inventions and innovations and installed the most modern facilities available at the time, including central heating and flushing toilets. The new house boasted 11 bedrooms, a billiards room, a ballroom, a library and many other beautifully decorated rooms, perfectly designed for entertaining and luxurious living. The newly restored Rathrobin House provided the perfect backdrop to a wonderful collection of paintings which the Bedell family had been acquiring for over 200 years. Vera's desire to create a home as grand as the one she grew up in ensured that Rathrobin House was the last word in Victorian splendour. She oversaw the planting of a beautiful walled garden and spent many happy hours there entertaining guests and playing with her lapdogs. Vera had incredibly high standards of behaviour and her disapproval was easily earned. The Colonel's fascination with all things modern didn't just run to fixtures and fittings. He was passionate about photography, which was rapidly becoming the favourite hobby of the wealthy. He bought a quarter plate camera and set about photographing his own daily life and that of his elite circle. But more unusually for someone of his social standing, he also took an interest in the local people of the area. Colonel Bedelf photographed people of all backgrounds, rich and poor, Protestant and Catholic, 
lords and ladies, servants and staff. He made detailed notes of his subjects, including names, places and dates. He also photographed the many fine houses and landmarks of the area, including Charleville Castle, Clonmacnoise and Castle Bernard, now known as Kinnity Castle. In 1897, Colonel Badelf was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society of Antiquaries and frequently attended meetings in Dublin. The organisation was non-political and non-sectarian and the modest subscription fee of five shillings a year allowed a varied membership from all walks of life. The Society's members attempted to photograph the antiquities of the 32 counties of Ireland and Colonel Badelf certainly rose to the challenge. As well as capturing hundreds of images out of doors, the Colonel experimented with indoor photography, which was a very difficult undertaking at that time. Vera was his favourite subject, although she very rarely graced her portraits with a smile. Rathrobin House was a hive of social activity. Vera hosted wonderful garden parties for the wealthy families of the local area as well as receiving visits from an impressive stream of family and friends from London, including her cousin, Lord Baden-Powell, who went on to found the Scout movement. By all accounts, Colonel Badelf was well liked by the people of Kalahi. Rather than rent land out to tenants, he decided to farm the land at Rathrobin himself, providing employment for so many in the area at what was considered a very fair wage. His love of innovation and invention surfaced again on his farm. He invested in a tractor and renewed all of the gates on the home farm with handmade wrought iron gates bearing his monogram MWB. Replacing gates was considered good farming practice, but some felt it was really an exercise in putting his own stamp firmly on the land. As the Bedelfs did not have children of their own, they took a special interest in Middleton's great-nephew, William McGann, the son of his niece, Kathleen Bedelf and Shane McGann. Kathleen's parents disapproved of their daughter's marriage and cut her out of their lives completely. Colonel Bedelf felt that she had been treated very unfairly and stepped in. He designated Kathleen as his sole heir to Rathrobin House and made her a personal allowance during his lifetime. William McGann went on to describe the Colonel as the nearest thing he had to a grandfather. Young William became a frequent visitor to Rathrobin House and in his autobiography he describes a feeling of always walking on eggshells there. He recalls an incident when his mother Kathleen wrote a long letter to the Colonel and he sent her back a dictionary to improve her spelling. But William also fondly recalls the many half-crowns he received from his great-uncle. Colonel Bedelf believed in the superiority of the gentry over all others, but at the same time displayed a great sense of humanity. William McGann recounts a trip to church, during which the carriage stopped at a rundown cottage and a ragged woman appeared. The Colonel handed a bottle of medicine to his chauffeur, Paul Wallace, who gave it to the old woman. She was terribly grateful and showered the Colonel and Mr. Wallace with blessings. Paul Wallace was the Colonel's right-hand man. He was dignified, versatile and reliable and took great care of the Colonel's carriages and cars. Colonel Bedelf taught Paul how to use the camera and there are a number of photographs in the Colonel's collection which were taken by Paul. The permanent staff at Rathrobin House was relatively large and over the years included John Slattery the butler, Mary Weston the lady's maid, Kate Flanagan, the upper housemaid, Mrs. Bennett, the cook, Mary Cash, the under housemaid, who was later promoted to cook, Margaret Cash, the kitchen maid, and Kate O'Connor, the laundry maid. Outdoor staff included Mr. Wallace, the chauffeur, Billy Guy, the herdsman, and John Bryant, the steward, who was later replaced by Mr. Woods. At peak times on the farm, like the threshing, a large number of local men would be brought in to help and the women would provide hearty meals to keep the team working late into the evening. In those days, the corn was threshed in a threshing mill, which was towed into position beside the corn ricks by a traction engine, a large steam engine that also drove the mill with a driving belt. 
As the corn stacks were demolished and the corn was fed into the mill, the rats were driven out. And William McGann had fond memories of wonderful days spent hunting rats with the Colonel's terrier risk. The late Mrs Pauline Matthews, daughter of Paul Wallace, described Christmas at Rathrobin as being one huge party. The Colonel would butcher a fine young bullock and Paul Wallace would deliver a roast to the home of each Rathrobin worker. The Wallace family were invited to Christmas dinner at Rathrobin House, along with Mr Woods and his wife and the local clergy. And after dinner, there were presents for everyone. Colonel Bedelv's photographs provide an important archive of many great events of the time, including the Great Storm of February 1903. The storm was so significant it is mentioned in James Joyce's masterpiece Ulysses. Over 2,000 trees were uprooted in the local area and almost 3,000 were lost in the Phoenix Park. The Colonel also took photographs in Stradbally during the Gordon Bennett Cup road race in 1903. A British driver had won the race unexpectedly the year before, but the British establishment was very strongly opposed to motoring, so Irish motor enthusiasts seized the opportunity to bring the race to Ireland. As there were only 300 cars in the country at the time, it was a wonderfully exciting event. Colonel Bedelf filled many roles in the judiciary over the years, from Justice of the Peace to High Sheriff of Kings County. Although an avid fan of the motor car, the Colonel came down hard on those who abused its power, as Mr Robert H. Poole of Charleville Square, Tullamore, found out to his dismay when he was charged at the petty session before Colonel Bedelf with having driven his car at a speed calculated to endanger the public safety. It was the first prosecution for a speeding offence recorded in Tullamore. Little did the Colonel know that his own car had at least on one occasion been put to the test. William McGann recalled a wonderful moment he shared with Paul Wallace as they drove from Rathrobin to Dublin alone together. As they came through the Curragh in the open top car, young William had to hold on for dear life and described it as a boy's wildest dream of thrilling speed when Mr Wallace whacked it up to 45 miles per hour. Black Lion was once a heavily populated focal point of Kilahi Parish and Jack Bryan's forge and stables were well known. When the First World War broke out, thousands of Irish horses were sent to the front. When the horses from Rathrobin went to war, their loyal farrier Jack Bryan accompanied them. Neither Jack nor the horses ever returned. The Church of St. Ohi, known as Black Lion Church, was built in 1818 and enjoyed a large local congregation. Colonel Bedelf and Vera attended every Sunday and sat in their own pew. The rectory next door provided schoolrooms for the Protestant children. But the Colonel became concerned about the condition of the building and gave land to build a new rectory just across the road. During the Great Famine, Kalahi Parish suffered a dramatic fall in numbers, but by 1911, the parish was undergoing a period of repopulation. Colonel Bedelf donated two acres of land to the parish priest Father O'Reilly to allow for a new national school and a residence for a teacher to be built. The Colonel also made generous gifts to his staff. On the occasion of his marriage, the steward John Bryant was given two fields to own and farm. In order to be seen as fair to all his workers, the Colonel also gave a small piece of land to a Catholic employee. In 1917, Colonel Bedelf went to Dublin for surgery and his failing health eventually forced himself and Vera to stay at his London home at Chain Walk to be closer to his doctors. Life at Rathrobin House had continued on as always, despite the rapidly changing political situation in Ireland. From the 1916 Rising to the War of Independence in 1921, but that was about to change. The Anglo-Irish Treaty was signed in January 1922 and by June a bitter and bloody civil war had broken out between those who supported the treaty and those who opposed it. Over the following year, many fine houses were destroyed by the anti-treaty faction. William McGann remembers carrying his father's revolver on his knee as they drove to Rathrobin House on a supervisory visit. When Colonel Bedelf heard that William, just 15 years old at the time, had acted as his father's bodyguard, he sent him £100. 
Paul Wallace wrote to the Bedelfs to warn them that the destruction of Rathrobin House was becoming increasingly likely. But the Colonel firmly believed Rathrobin would be spared. In April 1923, political tensions in the area finally boiled over and Rathrobin House was bombed and burned. Pauline Matthews remembers standing on the window ledge of her home, watching as the workers fought the flames. Paul Wallace had the unenviable job of informing the Colonel that the house had been destroyed and told his young daughter, it was the hardest letter I ever had to write. The Midland Tribune on Saturday 28th of April 1923 reported on the incident. Rath Robin Mount Bolas was burned to the ground on Wednesday night week by armed raiders. They sprinkled the apartments with petrol and the magnificent residence soon became a prey to the flames. The report goes on to say, Colonel Bedelf has always been foremost in helping local interests. His kindness and generosity are well known. The people were very sorry to hear his home was destroyed. The Irish Civil War ended just four weeks later. Colonel Bedelf was so utterly distraught at the destruction of his beautiful home that he forbade his ashes from being buried in the plot he had prepared for himself at Black Lion Church. The High Cross still stands. The land at Rathrobin was eventually taken over by the Land Commission and divided into small farms. Colonel Bedelf died in 1926, in his 77th year, and Vera scattered his ashes in the Cotswolds. She lived on in England until 1938 and died on her 75th birthday. In his will, the Colonel made sure that Paul Wallace inherited the house he had always lived in at Rathrobin, as well as 20 acres of land. Paul farmed the land until 1939, when he sold up and bought a farm at Beach Hill, just outside Tullamore. His farm flourished, his family thrived, and Paul lived on to the ripe old age of 83. William McGann went on to become a decorated war hero and celebrated author. He inherited his great uncle's photographic collection and in turn presented copies to the Offaly Historical and Archaeological Society. The photographs are now known as the McGann Collection. William McGann lived to the remarkable age of 101 and his autobiographical books An Irish Boyhood and Um Amour, together with the stunning photographs taken by Colonel Middleton Westenra Bedelf, provide a unique glimpse into the daily lives of the Irish gentry in the horse-drawn era and paint a vivid portrait of the final days of the Irish ascendancy. A century later, and life goes on in Kalahi. Although the parish has certainly changed dramatically, community spirit is as strong as ever. Black Lion Church is now privately owned. The last church service took place on Christmas Day in 1985. The schoolhouse, funded by the Colonel, still stands and is filled with the next generation, brimming with hope for the future. Rathrobin House lies in ruin, tall trees growing up through its majestic halls, a monument to a bygone age. Farming still plays an important role in Kalahi. The annual threshing festival in Ballyboy brings together people from all over the local area to celebrate the past and to remember the lives of their ancestors, who worked the land together and helped each other in times of need. And the parish of Kalahi is still home to many of the proud descendants of the people preserved forever in Colonel Bedelf's great labour of love, the McGann Collection.